Hey everybody, Juan here, and welcome to another Power Query tutorial. In the last tutorial, I show you how to, instead of every time changing a SQL query, how you can get that directly from a file. And today I'm going to take it one step ahead. So here in this example, I have multiple files. They're very simple queries, really. But think in practice, this could be more distinct and even more complex queries. So we have one here that where the where clause has region as central and another one that in the where clause we're filtering on region west. Very small difference, but once again, this could be more complex. Now, how can we turn this into a dynamic function that just simply loads whatever table I want with the least effort possible? In order to do that, we need to, firstly, create some variables. The first one we are going to create is going to be called file location. The second one is going to be called file name. And I can pre-populate it with something like West, even though we want that to be dynamic. Finally, file extension. And this is almost always going to be .sql, but you never know. It could be something else. It really doesn't matter. Now, the file location, I conveniently saved it right here, so I wouldn't forget it. So let me copy and paste it. And there you have it. Now we have the three components to point at a script. We need to create another variable, which I'm going to call file that uses the text combine to simply combine the output of as many elements as possible inside of a list. So I'm going to create a list with the curly brackets. And in here, we need to put the elements in the right order. So file name and finally file extension. Once again, I'm putting them into a list, a list in M is just made out of elements inside of these curly brackets. And what this is going to give me once I add the comma, of course, is going to be just the combination of the file extension, file name, and so on. We're heading the right direction, but we're not there just yet. So of course I can Good. So now let's make sure to replace once again this one, this query by whatever it is in this file. And I already show how to do this. So I'm not going to take too much time explaining this part. If you're, if you're not aware of what exactly I'm doing here, go check the previous tutorial. Link is in the description. So essentially what we're doing is saying, hey, I just want you to, instead of a normal query, find it in this file, which is in this location called file. Good. So let's just check really quickly if it works. It's going to ask us about privacy. And in here, you just have to tell it, yeah, no worry. This is, this is public. For the sake of the example, I'm going to say it's public so that it works. Now let's check. When I see region, indeed, they're all west. So it is working. But now if I want to call central, the best way of doing this would be to transform this into a function. So the first argument is going to be script name as text. And to create a function in Power Query, you just need to add inside of some brackets, just the name. You can specify what data type it is. And then like a right looking arrow, we are going to take this script name variable and replace it for whatever was in here. Now for maybe static purposes, you can also indent this, even though it doesn't really matter too much. And now we, we are getting there. 
this is gonna become a function and instead of orders i'm gonna call this load maybe load tables now when i type something like west and invoke is going to go to that file location and open the script called west which as you imagine only has region west i should probably rename it instead of invoked function but now what is really interesting is i could do exactly the same with central i have to also specify the privacy levels you only have to do this once and in reality this deserves another tutorial on its own but just for the sake of the example i said it was public once again we check here and region is central good idea to give it a more descriptive name and there you have it i just took whatever was in the scripts and i loaded them very easily now i build a function like this for an actual use case that i had in which we had at least a dozen of sql scripts then we needed to constantly load and instead of clicking on new new source and copy and pasting and everything I just figured this is a faster way. We can, of course, keep on taking it one level ahead and transform things like the file location into a variable, also maybe the file extension, and we can keep on transforming things into variables, but I'm going to stop here. You guys get the idea, and now it is your turn to play and to work with a function like this. So I hope you learn a lot and I'll see you in the next tutorial.